right, Mark, what is happening in the news this week? Well, there's no better way to start the news than with some salacious drama. <laughs> Reprising the role of the messy executive who loves to cause drama and keep secrets, it's none other than Mark Zuckerberg, a.k.a. Zuck, and playing the role of reasonable person trying to improve their product, it's Tim Cook, CEO of Apple. You, you mispronounced Tim Apple. <laughs> thought it was Adam Apple. <laughs> I hate myself. The show is going off the rails. I love We've it so much. We've already gone off the rails. <laughs> and Jess hasn't even said anything. <laughs> oh, I will. <laughs> don't, don't worry. Well, as the kids say, here's the tea. Currently, as is, apps like Facebook gather data by default and track all of your online activities and physical movements, even if you're logged out of the app. If you don't want to be tracked right now, it's current. The U.S.'s typical term of service is like a background opt-out rule, so you have to affirmatively make a choice to decline tracking and find that in the app. And Facebook currently has this, but many people are extremely skeptical given their history with data privacy. So Apple, being the company that they are, and they always are touting the security of their devices, privacy is really important for them. So this like type of tracking that Facebook's using is not something that Tim Cook really jives with. It's not his vibe. So effectively, <laughs> Apple started beef with Facebook when they revealed that the new iOS 14 operating system will include a new app tracking transparency feature, which will opt users out of tracking by default and force them to opt in. It's going to be like when you use an app and it's like this app wants to use your camera. Do you opt in or do you opt out? It'll be a very similar process for sharing your data with the app. And I think that makes a lot of sense. This is the general direction tracking has been making in general. Think like GDPR, you go into a website now and you either accept or decline cookies. That is how Apple devices are going to be now. And Zuck seems to be under this delusion that they can <laughs> stop this, despite this being the general trend everything is moving in. He thinks he can stop this by throwing a temper tantrum effectively and running a full page ad in the New York Times. Do you know why he did a full page ad in the paper times? Why, Greg? <laughs> so that Chrome wouldn't block it. I was going to make a joke about that. Oh, really? Actually. <laughs> no, and I didn't. I was like, that seems like a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you for making that leap for me, Greg. <laughs> More to come on Chrome ad blocking mm -hmm. a little bit later in the show. Mm -hmm. So we have a picture of the ad from Dave Stangis on Twitter, at Dave Stangis. And I just kind of want to read through it. So we can dissect this together. We're standing up to Apple for small businesses everywhere. At Facebook, small business at the core of our business. More than 10 million businesses use our advertising tools each month to find new customers, hire employees, and engage with their communities. Many in the small business community have shared concerns about Apple's forced software update. Has anyone heard a small business complain about that? Because I cannot say that I have. I feel like most small businesses don't even know this is happening. Which will limit businesses' ability to run personalized ads and reach their customers effectively. Now, let's think about small businesses. <laughs> what targeting options are they using on Facebook that they'll no longer have? Not many. They're probably running geolocation ads to certain demographics in their area to reach their customers where they are. But Mark, what about all the little small mom and pops on the corner that are doing remarketing ads towards people that viewed their careers page? What about all those people that don't exist? <laughs> <laughs> it says 44% of small to medium businesses started or increased their usage of personalized ads on social media during the pandemic. Okay, that's a fact, according to a Deloitte study. 
Without personalized ads, Facebook data shows that the average small business advertiser stands to see a cut of over 60% in their sales for every dollar they spend. That is a misconstrued number. The 60% is actually that someone who opts out of data is worth 60% less to advertisers. So that doesn't represent a loss on the business. That represents the 60% is the actual loss to Facebook of what that person is worth. So considering all of the, the ad costs and the data providers, you consider all of those costs in, businesses aren't actually using 60%. Like that number is different and it's not in this ad. While limiting how personalized ads can be used does impact larger companies like us. No, you are the most major person affected by this. This is about <laughs> you. This is not about small businesses. These changes will be devastating to small businesses, adding to the many challenges they face right now. This is propaganda. <laughs> small businesses deserve to be heard. So let's hear them. Not you, Facebook. Let's actually hear from small businesses and how they feel instead of pushing your beliefs on small businesses. We hear your concerns. Oh, because you're listening? <laughs> and we stand with you. Join not us anymore at- if you opted out. They're not. <laughs> <right? laughs> Join us at fb.com slash speak up for small. I hope they heard this. And I just want to say, like, I had a lot of spice there, but I don't have much more spice to add because Robert Zaff from Forbes stole a lot of my spice <laughs> today. And I would never think of Forbes as a publication that's stealing my spice. Like, this is surprising. <laughs> yeah. Usually I think of um, a lot of spice spread out throughout a, a slideshow. <laughs> These ads involve a double irony. First, the world's leading online social media platform has placed ads in newspapers. <laughs> Second, Facebook claims to be standing up for the little guy. This is the same company that faces a Federal Trade Commission lawsuit, as well as lawsuits from 48, that's 48, we have 50 states, <laughs> state attorneys general <laughs> for unlawful, anti-competitive <laughs> conduct that includes crushing or forcing the buyout of any small businesses that threaten Facebook's hegemony. Like, just let that digest. So the people at Facebook think they're sticking their heads out for the little guy. That's what they're saying. If people actually think that who work there, and this isn't just PR, I'm concerned about them because it's more like they're an ostrich sticking their head in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> like they're such a technical laggard that they're refusing to change their business model, that they're making money off personalized ads as the times progress. Because this is reality. This is how privacy is changing Everything with data is going to be opt-in moving forward. That's just the way we're moving. And they're refusing to change their business model. And it's going to end up hurting them if they don't. Like, people might opt into sharing data with them. And that will make them worth more. People who opt out, they're 60% less. So they need to think about other ways they can monetize their platform for those users that choose to opt out of advertising or personalize ads. They're still eligible for advertising, but they're not, data can't be collected outside of the Facebook platform for these people. How I feel, Facebook isn't helping small businesses. It's just a distraction to get people away from their previous behavior in terms of data privacy and the actual reasons why they're afraid of Apple's update because some of the things they've been doing might be viewed as unethical given the way data privacy is moving and being established. And honestly, like I really do not think that small businesses benefit all that much from the targeting options they would lose with these opt-outs. And I want to read one more quote that I think is important. So this is from Andre Arrieta from the Electronic Frontier Foundation. The Association of National Advertisers estimates that when the ad tech tax is taken into account, publishers are only taking home between 30 and 40 cents of every dollar spent on ads. The rest goes to third-party data brokers who keep the lights on by exploiting your information and not to small businesses trying to work within a broken system to reach their customers. Small businesses don't have the most at stake Facebook does. Small businesses are at Facebook's mercy. They're in a bind. Um, so that is exactly how I feel about this. 
And the bottom line is that companies like Facebook are selling our data with only implied consent, not actual consent. And Apple wants to put an end to this and make the consent outright. And I totally agree with Apple on this. Like what you saw? Of course you did. If you're looking for more, Marketing O'Clock releases new episodes every Friday with the Digital Marketing News of the Week. You can subscribe wherever you consume your podcast or click to watch the full episode, the next news story, or read all the articles from the show.